Marhaba ya shabab. Welcome to part 6 of the tutorial series. So, in the last video we just created the core package with some classes and logic we will reuse in the other packages. Now what I want to focus on is the internet connectivity to get the data. So, let's create a new package called networking. Networking. You will send our requests to the API. So let's start. Let's create an interface for it. Let's call it task API. This is an interface. Yes, add it to code. And, da, 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 da. and okay. First, we need some constants, companion objects. These are our, with companion objects, we get um, static static values to our class, to our interface. So let's create a constant, private const val. Let's call it task underscore API tasks endpoint. Task API task endpoint. Okay, that looks good. And what I can do now is sorry from wrong tab. So API uh, again to my the up. Uh, so Good, 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 good. Okay, we have. Uh, I just copied it. This is our endpoint. Um, API slash v1 slash tasks. And we need one more constant. Because as you can remember, all of our. Oh, damn it. Uh, Close it, clo close it, gosh. Okay, as you can see, our endpoints have all the same structure. Either it ends with tasks or it ends with tasks and an ID, S task slash ID. So that's why we'll call this API task ID endpoint. Task API. And this will be, of course, slash curly braces ID. So we match here full, full with them, endpoints with those endpoints, and that's great. Okay, now we can set up our query methods or update post methods. Let's start with um, get. From retrofit, yes, and we have to say where it has to go, and it goes to the tasks endpoint. This will be a suspend function. We will use coroutines, get tasks, and we just have a query parameter in here inside. And let's let's say at Query parameter query, and here goes status. I mean, you just can. What you can do is just copy, paste. Now you're safe, and say status as of type string. And what should it return? It should return a list, because here it's an array, but Arrays or lists, it doesn't matter. Uh, it's all a collection in Kotlin, Java. Fetch response. Okay, that's great. We have our first method to query things, and now we will have a similar method. Uh, let's say again get task, but now we want just one task, 
a specific task, to be precise. This will be, of course, uh, also a suspend function. We will use coroutines get task by ID. And this is now we need the path. Add path. Say ID. And ID. And this will return a single task. So ta just task fetch response. Okay, next function is for creating a task, I would say. Post, where it should go, it should go to the list of tasks. Um, because we are adding to the already existing list a new task or, yeah. And let's call it create task. And here we need uh, to give it a it will the request in the body there's the actual payload so just it's called yeah I'm gonna it's yes create request from type task create request and this will then return us the task fetch response nice nice latif so what we are going to do next is to, when we create something, we can also delete something. And this goes to a specific task. And this is why we need the ID endpoint. Because now we say suspend function can delete a task. Maybe we have to check if it was successful or not. And since we have to add some custom logic, since our API doesn't, the only thing that the API responds to us is a, a 204. Yeah, I mean, here it's 200, but it's actually 204 and no actual payload. Like the other ones, they always return a body, but we get an empty body. So that's why we have to check it out, check if it was successful in another way. So we use again the path ID. So yes, uh, this will be a type of response from retrofit. And the response of course will be a Boolean value. So basically we'll ju just check it was if it was in this 200 range if yes, then true, it was successful, can delete, can delete task, of course, can delete task if it was successful or not. And otherwise, if, it, if, if it's not in a 200 area, it will be false and this response will be false. Okay, now let's go on to patch for updating a task. Here we need, again, a specific endpoint, we have to t tell which specific task we want to update this will be also suspend function update task i will just call it update task and here we need again a path and of course we need also a body where should the payload and the body and this will be update request task update request looks good task fetch response okay okay yeah as i said this method where we need is to define with the id which task to get update and here will be the fields the values we want to update and as you can remember all of them are nullable so we can specifically decide which ones to update or not and yeah that's basically it for this tutorial uh, for this uh, interface let us continue now with the actual implementation so i just copied the name in networking, we are creating a new class, an object class in this time. Task API web 
service. The actual web service will hold the actual implementation. Nice. Okay. Now we need again um, um, constant value private. Actually, this should be uh, just wait a second. Ah, okay, it's an object. That's why we don't. Um, I want to add a companion, but it's already an object class, so that's why it's not necessary. Const var. This will be task underscore API underscore base URL. Yeah, this will hold our base URL. And what is our base URL? I think you might have guessed it. It's just here. All this is a all this what what I have marked here is our base URL. Forget the API slash v1 slash task this is our endpoint. So this is our base URL. Nice. And now we will create uh, a method to create the OK HTTP client. Private fun. Create OK HTTP client it returns an ok http client montes great let's start we want a logger so a logger instance is needed it should be logger interceptor okay and there we new, use the static uh, method set level. Then we need again a HTTP logger interceptor. And say the level okay is the body. The interceptor level is the body. Okay. Okay, great. What we now need as well is now we have to return something, the builder. Let me just copy this. This is the builder pattern we are using right now. I mean, the builder pattern got provided for us. So let's say add interceptor. And of course, here, which interceptor? The logger interceptor. And we say connect timeout. I would suggest you set the timeout between uh, 15 and 10 seconds or 20 seconds. I just say, let's just say 15 seconds. But, uh, it depends how long your users can wait. Time units, seconds. So we know this 15 is re regarding the seconds. Then the retry, retry on connection failure is true. If it f fails the first time, we try it again and then build. So we get the instance. As you can see, this is now done. Now let's uh, create the actual client. Uh, da, 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 da. Okay, let's say fun get task RP client, API client. It returns our interface, of course. So, okay, what we first need is for serialization and deserialization because we're getting um, these kind of JSON elements. We need uh, JSON from Google. We need the JSON builder first. Set. Uh, now, lenient and great. Okay, we need an okay HTTP client. HTTP client e equals create. Okay, HTTP client. Okay, then next thing we need to. Um, 
return stuff uh, retrofit dot builder dot client is of course okay HTTP client but let me just make a line break in here okay 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 we have the client we need the base url of course uh, this is our task api base url then we need a converter factory this is now important this is the scars converter factory dot create this line is very very important because because of this line Otherwise, we cannot fetch a list. This is an array, and we, otherwise, it's it's um, used to fetch an object, not an array, not a list. Okay, uh, and as well, this is handled then to to ser deserialize with our JSON converter factory dot create, and we pass our JSON objects in here. That's why we also set set lenient. Okay, okay. Let's say build, not base URL, build. And one more thing, let's say create. And what are we creating? Task API, class Java. Okay, this is done so. Um, yeah, the, the most important things are here we're setting the JSON field for uh, serialization, deserialization, when we're fetching and fetching data, sending data to the API, and to not getting an error when fetching a list, an array in, this, in, the, in our case, this array. Um, we set the Scala's converter factory to create. And yeah, of course, we're just applying our JSON in here. And so we can communicate from now on with our um, API endpoint endpoints. Uh, yeah, that's basically it for this tutorial. I hope it doesn't get too long. And so if you liked it, write a comment, like, subscribe, you know the drill. And see you in the next tutorial where we start adding the actual repository logic. See you soon. Ilalikaya Shabab.